Welcome back to Co video series Variants. In part one, we introduced what various variants are and the prevalence of the main SARS CoV 2 variants throughout the past two years. In part two, we'll continue to talk about the characteristics of these variants and see how researchers learn from their history to make predictions for future variants. In particular, we will focus on the transmission of Omicron and its sublineage variants. Let's first go back to the lineage prevalence of the SARS-CoV-2 variants. Remember in part one, we learned the trends of the variants emergence can be country and region specific. So this time, alongside UK, let's take a look at South Africa as well. Since this is where several Omicron sublineage variants emerged in very short time period, we also narrowed down the observation window from January 2021 up to now. We can see in South Africa, Omicron emerged into several different sublineage variants. After the original Omicron rapidly took over Delta, each new subvariant also took over the previous one rapidly. Now, the main strain variant in South Africa are BA.4 and BA.5. In the UK, Omicron followed a similar tendency. Despite of a several months delay in the emergence of BA.4 and 5, since July 2022, BA.5 has rapidly become the new dominant instead of BA.4. From part one, we knew variants are emerged from adaptable mutations. But how are these variants related? Let's look at the phylogeny of SARS-CoV-2 variants, which shows their evolutionary relationship. From left to right, the direction re represents ancestors to descendants. We can see Delta and Omicron strains diverted long time ago, and Omicron evolved into more subvariants than Delta. The most recent BA.4 and 5 subvariants are direct descendants of BA.2, suggesting genetically the two of them are closer to BA.2 than the other variant BA.1. Knowing this evolution, we can compare the characteristics of these Omicron subvariants against the original strain and the Delta variant. We focus on two important aspects, transmissibility and severity. We see as time goes by, newly emerged variants surpass the previous variants with an increased estimated basic reproductive number or not and relative transmissibility compared to each previous strain. Here, for the most recent BA.4 and 5, we still need time and data to estimate there or not, since the estimation is country-specific on the population infection history. But we do know they are higher than that of BA.2, the currently most transmissible subvariant. We not yet have the result whether BA.4 or 5 increases severity in illness, though it's likely they behave similar to BA.1 and 2, which are less severe than Delta. Evidence also show the vaccine effectiveness is significantly reduced across Omicron variants, especially in BA.4 and 5, which we will further explain in the next few slides. We often say Omicron is genetically more transmissible than Delta. But what does that mean? This is to do with the infection and immune response between virus and human cells. In SARS-CoV-2, the spike protein, or S protein in short, binds to a specific receptor protein on human cells in order to enter and infect the cells. This receptor protein is called ACE2 receptors. Now, some variants can cause S protein to be more stable or easier to bind to ACE2, so they can infect cells more easily and have higher viral transmission. 
On the other hand, after we take vaccines, we can produce antibodies to bind to and neutralize the S proteins, which block their infection to human cells. But variants can change the structure of S proteins that are more difficult for antibodies to bind to. This is called immune escape or antibody evasion. In fact, successful Omicron variants have shown both higher affinity to ACE2 and higher immune escaping ability. And these are caused by different specific mutations. Zoom in to see the actual mutations of the S protein. Here, each row is a different lineage, and each column is a specific mutation and its site. The depth of the color represents the mutation prevalence in the lineage. We can see some mutations are shared across variants, while some, while some others are unique to one or several variants. We can also notice variants that are closer in phylogenetic tree also have more shared mutations. The black boxes highlight the three mutations unique to Omicron variants, BA.4 and 5. The three of them show evidence of increasing the binding affinity to the ACE2 receptor. The green boxes highlight three of the shared mutations in BA.2, 4, and 5. These three mutations, together with the two previous mutations, present increased ability of the antibody evasion. So these two unique BA.4 and 5 mutations have dual effects for increasing viral transmission. This molecular evidence is also consistent with the findings that BA.4 and 5 dominate the current transmission. Now, we know everything about the transmission, evolution, and mutations of the variants. But the question we care most about is, what is the next variant? Clearly, predicting the next dominant variant is equal to predicting the potential new combination of mutations. And this is very difficult, not only because we have enormous number of possibilities in mutation combinations, but it's already complicated enough to analyze the history of all variants in the past. Scientists have been working very hard on predicting the future variants. A recent example is a research published in May this year on science. In this paper, researchers proposed pi or not a Bayesian model that analyzed 6.4 million SARS-CoV-2 genome sequences to identify potential combinations of mutations that are high likely to become predominant in the near future. This plot shows the predicted relative fitness versus the date of lineage emergence for all lineages using the data up to October 2021. We can see the model correctly predicted the predominance of the Omicron BA.2 subvariants, although at that time it was just a new variant with very few cases. The model also identified several important mutations related to fitness. Apart from the infection related spike protein, Pi or not also identified several mutations in non spike proteins. This is conceptually consistent with the current scenario in B.4 and 5 subvariants, where the two of them share the exact same mutation profile on the spike protein, but differ in the non-spike protein sequences, while B.5 shows dominance over B.4. Studies like this have shown the prominence of raising early alarm at the beginning of new dominant variants. But we are still far behind fully understanding the mechanism of variant prediction and viral evolution. That comes to the end of part two and the entire variant section. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.